Okay, guys, here we go again. And look at another one. She's got another Ibanez. The girl likes Ibanez and got good taste. Look at that guitar. And she's getting these things for free almost. Man, some people. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and let's hear what your baby sounds like. All right, so I'm uh, Sherlin again, and I am here to show you my second Ibanez. As he said, I do love my Ibanez. It's perfect for small hands. And I'm just gonna doodle around a little bit and play a little something for you, and hope you enjoy it. Girl, thank you. The girl's baby. got some licks and chops, doesn't you guys? I'll try it. I'll nice try it. stuff. Okay, guys, hang in there. We'll show us setting up and working on guitar. So just hang in there. It's a SDGR, and uh, what we're going to do to it today, we're going to uh, modify it. The owner wants it uh, set up like her other bass with all the extra accoutrements on it. And we've got new strings to put on there. So let's get rid of these old ones. Let's down tune it. You got this tune kind of strange or wired up a little bit differently. They're all different directions on the uh, wind ups. But anyway, what we'll do, we'll set these all up for us. She's got other bass in here as well. We'll cut these on 12 uh, note frets, as usual. These we'll have to, sorry guys, these we'll have to cut. <laughs> one at a time so thick what we don't want people to think that we use old strings especially on the bass strings yeah they're very expensive but uh, we don't keep old strings around here that's bad news because believe it or not guys even on a, a, a regular guitar and so much more on a bass, these wound strings, they carry, you know, DNA from the player. And if that person has the flu, or that person has a virus, you know, it's always a potential. You know, you can contract that. And that's not good for anybody. So, no old strings remain in the shop. They're all tossed away, in case somebody wondered. Yeah, you could save these bass strings. They're in decent shape, but uh, she wants new ones put on, so that's what we're going to do. We'll put new strings on her basses. Save her tag. And she is also up for the jam. So we're going to put down that she's up for the jam on her tag. When the jam comes along, we're going to uh, give her a call, give her like a three, four day warning so you can make it out here to uh, the shop and we'll have a jam for the entire area which will be pretty fun like it was last time a lot of drinks, a lot of music lots of fun okay so first steps, you know what <laughs> oil up this fretboard get it nice and uh, cleaned up let's see what we got here I'm pretty sure it's in clean shape Women take so much better care of their guitars than men do. 
I'm not trying to be sexist, guys. It's just this, uh, true facts. I worked on them all. And from my experience, women take better care of the guitars. See, there's really any dirt on this thing at all. No hands fritz. <laughs> but wow, has she banged into these pickup covers. They've absolutely taken beating. And it's a good thing this thing's being modified because it looks like it's on its way. They look like they're on the way out. Also, what we'll do, we'll save these for her so that uh, there's no issues with the uh, ownership of these pickups. They belong to her. That's the way it is with any of, these, any of this gear I change out. And if she doesn't want them, we'll put them in stock somewhere and give them away free or something, you know, if they're still working. But uh, anyway, that's how we are. So now it's all semi-cleaned up. We're going to let that uh, oil sit there for just a little bit and uh, go from there. So hang in there, guys. Okay, we're going to start removing these older parts and get those out of the way. And uh, basically, just need a little swift turn on these uh, quarter nuts. Like, you know, one-fourth the width of a regular nut. I always save these things for the owner in case they want to do some modifications on another guitar someday and use these other parts as well as these older uh, pickups. Looks like you may have a white haired dog at home. Dog white hairs. Okay, so we got those all loose. All you gotta do is push down and get these washers off. Put those in a safe spot. Now, I was looking on the inside of this guitar earlier when I took the uh, back flap off and I noticed that uh, some of the things weren't wired up anymore. Some have come loose. One thing else I wanted to mention is that anytime you bring your guitars in that have uh, active pickups, always remove the uh, batteries. The first thing I do when I put these in the stand, check to see if the batteries still in there and take them out and put them in your, you know, put them in your little case. So, we're back to it now and Finish putting these parts in there. Let's see about getting these old ones out. And this one's very much attached, very oh, very well. We get this to spin off. This jack plugs on here very well. So I can loosen, loosen it up. And I don't want to damage any wires here because, like I said, this guitar was active up until she brought it in. Okay, so I cut a twist tie off that was on there. And what's coming out of the guitar right now are the uh, separate controls, as well as the ground wires. They have a lot on here. And uh, the uh, leads for the battery. Okie dokie. And it looks like somebody did a pretty good job of this. They shrink wrapped them all up. And there are the pickup leads that were shrunk wrapped. You can see this or not. Sorry, guys. They shrunk wrapped those. Pretty nice job. Sorry. See that? That connection. Anyway, all that's got to come off there and separate these and get these pickups clean of this uh, gear here. One more black one on the ground here gets got to come off. And there the pickups clean and clear. So I got sorry guys again. So all the pickups are clean and clear, you know, from my hands. And what I've got left with is a uh, the two wires from the battery and the ground wire from the bridge. And I want to leave those as long as possible. So I'm gonna cut those right at the uh, pots themselves. Okay. Yeah right at the spot. So this set of controls will go into a package and later on can be used on a different, you know, base. Uh, if they're all working. I haven't checked that, but we got a new base to put in there. And the only wire I'll keep will be this ground wire. The rest of them I'll put all new wires in. 
And of course, I'll check this for continuity before I do anything, you know, with it. But these have all got to come out. So let's flip this back over and get these pickups out of here. A little bit worse for wear, guys. <laughs> They're a little beat up. So let's get those out of the way. Get these new ones set up to uh, see what I gotta do to install those. I may have to do some drilling and some refitting on the new ones. They're much different size. As well as I got to put an extra hole in this body for another control to fit through. Okay, let's see. Phillips, get these off. You can see everything I'm doing. I'm trying to keep my hands as best I can out of the way. And it's surprising there's a little bit of schmutz inside these uh, threads, but that's not too bad. Look at that. Some actually those come out. I like the way they do their setups on their pickups. Very easy to install, switch, and change. And uh, we'll just put those in with <coughs> the other parts. And what's different here, guys, these are wood screws that I'm taking out right now from these uh, Bartonones or Barton Bartons. How you pronounce that? Some of you help me. Bartonelli's, Lini's. Some of you help me out with pronunciation of this. Spell it out for me phonetically. These are pretty good pickups, I think. Or base guitars. I'll show you here in a second. These are actually wood screws. These are not metal screws holding into a bracket. They actually screw into the body of the guitar. See that? That's what holds these puppies down. Pulls right out. Bingo, bango. Nice and neat, all contained. Very nice pickups. And you have both your control wires right here on the body. Pretty slick, huh? <laughs> I think. And it's a contact uh, circuit, so it's not bad. Not bad at all. But uh, before I take these out, we're going to clean out these cavities. So I can. And verify that I'm not duplicating effort by taking them out, putting them right back in again. We'll see what the other ones are set up like. I haven't even looked at those yet. We'll see what they are made of and how they're made. And figure this all out. Okay, so here are the new electronics going in. All right, same brand. Bartolini, Liney, Luni. <laughs> And here are the new pickups going in. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh oh, hold on, guys. <laughs> Hang in there. Well, the good news is these are the exact same size as the ones I'm replacing. A couple of new screws in there, one new screw. As you can see, same exact sizes. That's nice. Okay. So, no routing out of the bodies. All right. Both fit in there nice and snug. And I'll run these, wow, thick wires through here. And you can see that, uh, you know, a little different than the other ones. Now they're set up. Okay. And we'll go from there. So, hang in there, guys. I'll get these instructions out. Get these wiring diagrams out and go through these real quick and see what I'm working with. See? Ta -da. So these aren't necessary for this particular type of pickup. So these come out. And this rig that we're running on this one. Wow, come out of there, babe. And we'll save those for future use. Is that's what she wants. And yes, it's a she. This is a she bass player. She's a cutest little thing. She's tiny. Her bass is big as she is. <laughs> Just as cute as a button. 
Okay, so what we need to do, take a look at these. Ba -ba -ba -ba, get these wired through and get these attached. Best we can. Then get their wiring out of the way so we can put in the pots. Do a dry fit up on these things. Not spit up, fit up. <laughs> okay. Do a dry fit. That's going to fit there real nicely. And these, of course, have the same type of mounting screws, except just one more of them. There's one extra screw to this to level it, which that's a good idea. If they're long enough. All right, don't you give me a hard time. The first one went right in. There you go. Okay, so let's pull this one on through. That's set up in the space. Like that. Bartolini. Bartolini. Bartobumba. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to try to get this all set up. And check to see where those screws went. There they are. There should be six of them. There's only two. <laughs> that always figures, but there's two. There's a couple extras in the uh, bag, and I'm hoping they're going to fit. Now those are new screw holes. I have to do uh, do some pilot holes in those. Get those in there right. Okay. And go from there. All right, so these come back out again. So for this one, and what I'm gonna do is take my driver and start screwing this thing in, so that I know exactly where to pre-drill that, and get the right size drill bit for it, just before I knock my phone over. And of course, people calling from all over want their guitars fixed. That's who was calling earlier. It's like, guys, you know my shop hours. Just bring it on in. Call before you come. And what I'm doing now, guys, I'm not actually screwing this in. I'm just starting a hole to get a location. Even though it's going in, I'm going to take it right back out again and see if I didn't mark it properly. Yes, I did. So I got two good marks there. <clears throat> Even though it's going to go in there, I don't want to force it in there and split that wood open. So I want to take a tiny little drill bit, drill in there, put the uh, pile holes down so I can get that done. Get these mounted. Hang in there. Well, I've gone two sizes smaller on this drill so that uh, it is not going to... Uh, be too big it's gonna be just big enough to allow that tip to start in this guitar and not split that wood which is running that grain exactly <laughs> like it was split if I did this wrong and just try to force those dry those screws into that wood without these pilot holes I mean it would split it good Okay, so let's put this back in there. Let's get on that hole. Yeah, that's right on it. Okay. Other one on it. Get those other parts out of that bag. I'm just wondering why this didn't come with enough screws for it. That's kind of odd. Good. And now that one, 
has already been pre-drilled on this, so all you gotta do is find the right screw again. And your parts bag. And then finish off this pickup. Granted that the screws are the right size, which they may not be. <laughs> I sure hope they are. They're from the same manufacturer. Wow, that's close, guys. Doggone it, where are those other screws? Nowhere to be found. Huh. Well, that's something to complain about. Once you took those out and was looking at it or just left them out of the package, but these seem to work. Okay, these will work. All right, both the uh, new pickups are in. They're not uh, set to depth or anything. I just got those uh, in there solid. And now we get to go to the instructions on this little jewel here and see exactly how they want us to wire this up. Kind of interesting. Aha! Different? Yeah, that's a little different. Look at this, guys. A uh, little bit different, guys. A little bit different, but you know, not too crazy. Ooh. It does look like I'll be drilling some holes in the guitar, though. I don't think I have spots here. The extra one for a uh, switch and a, uh, another pot. We'll see what we come up with and uh, get this baby set up. Now here, we want to get these out of our way. This is our grounding wire. And these two wires here are to our battery. Get those out of the way. Let's see how that's put in there. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Pretty simple, straightforward, silly. Okay, I just want to put these out of my way for a while. I'm just kind of tuck them back inside this and not close it because it'll break it, but I may just take that over and take this ground wire out of the way as well. I was going to take those. Best to get them out of your way and no headaches later. Trying to push them and pull them and mess with them. And I would change out this little jewel here. These are just crap. All right, guys, you see this? That's just crap. You know, they make much better ones. They're not that expensive. So I may just change it out anyway, but we'll see. All right, so you can see I got everything taped out of the way for now because I've got to come in here and do this. Sorry, guys. Drill a hole right there. So as you can see, I've got a little spot here I want to uh, drill a hole through and uh, keep it kind of equal distance on this with the others, but not too close to this uh route or to this uh, spot here in case it splits the wood. So I'll start out with a really tiny drill bit again. Go all the way through. I mean real tiny guys. Uh, start that pilot hole. So hang in there because I gotta move this thing around to get to it and have it overlap my, or my bench so I don't drill a hole into my mat. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to see happen. I'm just kind of running out of space here. I'm going to have to make some adjustments here to the shop pretty soon. I've got to figure the diameter of this as well. And the fact that uh, I can't get down too deep with this drill, these small ones. What I'll do is end up going larger and larger until I get to a big enough uh, drill bit where I can actually use my uh, oh, tool to open up that hole. And as you'll see, I've gone to a bigger bit to start the uh, rest of the drilling. Get that through there. And when I get to the right length, sorry, <laughs> when I get to the right width, I will be using a, uh, so what I use is this little router to get in here and open up this hole big enough and come from the back, do it very gently. And just get it big enough to get that head through there. This is much better than trying to use a power tool and chipping the dickens out of it. This is brand new, so it does a great job. I'm 
just about there. All right, let's back it out. Yep, just about there, guys. A little bit larger, and we got this thing nicked. Looks pretty good, it's right? Even with the uh, other ones, it's equal distance. It looks like it belongs there. That sixth hole. Alright, let's back it out. Now that's perfect. Alright. So, we got the perfect size holes here for the parts. And uh, we'll get those laid out in here and see a, a dry fit looks like. And uh, go from there. So hang in there. Well, here's something odd about all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> everything fits properly, but uh, a lot of these don't come with uh, washers or lock washers. Or uh, in the first set that I took out of here had like four wash, uh, four lock washers per pot. <laughs> so it's a good thing there's extra ones, I guess. I'll be using those to get this to lock down, make sure it stays that way. I don't have any issues with that. Of course, this pretty much fits like it fits the way it's supposed to fit. Uh, there's not a lot of choice on the arrangement here. Just kind of have to put them where they go. But uh, anyway, it looks like all the stuff is kind of pre-wired. It just needs to be hooked up to uh, the proper pickups and set up properly. Like I said, it's going to be a dry fit and set up and test and see what we come up with before I lock this down permanently because there's some weird wiring in here that I don't recognize what the heck they're doing it's like what the heck why would they do it that way of course you know there's no way on earth I've seen everything I'm not that freaking old but uh, there are some if you saw some of this stuff you say you'd say the same thing you know you think why are they doing it that way all right so hang in there guys Okay, guys, uh, on a very close inspection, I see a problem. With these uh, wires that lead to this uh, little uh, board here, I see a lot of crimping, and I see some, uh, some of the uh, insulation has been cut into. This purple one, this uh, orange one, this blue one, damn it. And they've been cut into, I don't know what that's going to cause that's going to cause any problems now I've got this blue one's got an issue it goes right into this little pot here if you can see that's a potentiometer right there for adjustments damn it damn it damn it it looks to me like they bent this and it rubbed against something and they put something on it like some clear crap or something like uh, glue maybe touch it with a glue brush Try to hide the imperfection and it touched something else and it rubbed off on it or something. Oh, it's just shitty. But we'll see. Uh, once we wire it all up, see if it works. If it doesn't work, uh, I'll go back and check my wiring, uh, copacetic with their plans. I'll check this little jewel here and see if that's an issue. Now, I don't think I can do anything. I can't, it's sealed. This board is sealed. I can't get in there and do anything to it. It's a black box, basically what they call it. And the wires leading into it, that's just tough shit, basically. And into the pot, too, that's just tough shit. There is adjustment here, like any other potentiometer. Now, there's tiny adjustments, but, uh... Oh, I hate seeing that kind of stuff. That just worries me that I'm going to spend all this time and effort getting this thing to work, and then it'll crap out or something go wrong with it, you know? Because there's a part been damaged. Anyway, if you look at this closely, you'll see that they've cut in. Right, so I can show you that. They've cut in a piece of wiring. See that? And obviously cut it too short on the box. It goes into because it's a sealed box, sealed black box. You can't get in there and change anything. So that well, just add a piece on. Well, I don't know what kind of signal problem that's going to cause, whatever. But uh, that kind of worries me too. Plus those bad wires. And of course, this pot, the only thing adjustment on this thing is this pot here. And uh, 
Beyond that, there's nothing more I can do to it. So hang in there, guys, while I figure this out and check the schematics on this, see what this goes to, and see if there's going to be an issue. But uh, those other wires down here, that, that may be, very well may be an issue. And I sure hope not. But uh, I don't want to do a lot of work on this thing to come up to find out that it's crapped out because of some bad wiring. Hang in there, guys. Well, we're back inside the Ibanez bass guitar that we're working on. And the darnest thing is the instructions on how to wire this thing up are about as confusing as I've ever seen a set. And the thing about it that makes it very uh, confusing is that uh, the people who made this, uh, made these pickups and made this uh, rig here, uh, <laughs> tried to save on paper and paperwork by putting four different uh, methods of doing this onto one sheet. And saying, well, if you have this, you know, level, let's do this, and da da da. Well, it's confusing as hell, at least to me it is. And I've got all these, and extra, sorry, I got all these extra wires I gotta get rid of. I gotta cut these down. Now, I never cut pickup wires, I'll show you those. I never ever cut the pickup wires. I leave those exactly as you see them, same length, right? Unless there's no way, uh, unless there's no other way around it, there's not enough room to put them in here, but. I see I've got plenty of room to, to, to wind these in here and not be in the way of everything. Because the uh, battery itself is not inside this control, it's over here. Okay, so there's plenty of room. But just to leave these wires hanging out is just kind of crazy. You're asking for you know trouble later on. And it looks to me like what they did, they cut this way too short. All right, this one right here, this power wire that leads to the uh, battery. They cut it way too short and came back in and added some more length to it, <laughs> all right? But uh, it still needs to be short because here's what I got to work with on the other side. And they're just way too long. I mean, look how long those are, <laughs> you know? So I'm going to cut those short, cut this ground wire from the bridge short. Uh, this goes to the, uh, oh, to the uh, jack. I'm going to cut it shorter. But to leave no space in there just in case. So what I want to do next, do some cutting. Cut these down to size so that I'm not uh, having these giant strands of wires hanging out doing nothing. And they don't have to travel very far to connect with one another. So it's like I can cut almost half of it off. So I'll start by cutting this off. And I'll use my little tool here to get some exposed wire and do the very same thing to the one right next to it. Cut it off shorter. Alright. And pull some wire out like that. And so I'm connecting over here to these very short ones, okay? I don't have much problem there. All right, so uh, this is the ground wire from the uh, thing itself, so I can cut that about half off. Make sure I have enough room to uh, run it where I need it to run, but not so much as it's in the way of everything. And of course, I'll be using this heat shrink to uh, connect them together once I figure out exactly how they go. And that's confusing as well because the way his diagram is set up. But I got you something here because I'm just here looking at it lately, trying to figure out where the hell does this thing go? These, I think, these uh, coming off this one uh, switch, those actually go to uh, the jack too. Part of one of the lot, one of these leads goes to the jack, so I don't need that as long. Cut that down. Expose that one too. All right, so now I've got almost all of them exposed except for this power line. I can cut that down quite a bit. Come in here and expose that. Now, now I've got some wires that are much more able to work with and not just hanging out all over the place. Cause me another bit grief. Let's twist those up and throw those away. Okie dokie. Now, Let's go back to the diagram and take another look at this. This is confusing as hell. 
I'm gonna show you this real quick. See what I mean? <laughs> but if you happen to have the harness 5.4, which is what this one is, here's the wiring to it, here's how it connects over here. But it leaves two wires exposed still. I think those are to the power uh, battery itself. I need to make sure here. Yeah, here they are on the other side. So I think that's pretty much got it. Uh, I need to get that other jack out and get it cleaned up. Okay, so now I've got this older uh, original uh, in the uh, in my little uh, gripper here, and what I'm trying to do is get this old uh, wires off here because I got to reuse it. Unfortunately, it's the only thing that's going to fit this guitar the way it was made. I can't use a uh, normal uh, guitar jack; this won't fit. It looks like I may not have enough heat on this one. This wire loose off this. I can restart all this over again. Doggone it. There it came. All I'll do, I'll take my tip of my tweezers, reopen this hole here so that it works. It allows me to wire it up. And I kind of put these on here a little bit shoddily, but that's what I got to work with. Well, so now I've got a semi-cleaned <coughs> jack so I can use on this guitar. It's the original one. Got an old solder off there. Got me three decent holes. And what I'll do, I'll go from the diagram it shows using this stereo jack and go with the tips that correspond to this. Makes sense? I sure hope so. And wire it up temporarily. Make sure I got these correct on this. Because I hardly ever use a jack that looks like this. Hardly ever. I used one once before. And I'm not really sure about these leads, which one's what. And that's confusing as hell. So you do, you temporarily wire it up, is your best guesstimate, and go from there. Ah, oh, it's confusing. Anyway, we'll see what we can come up with. And uh, if it's right, well, we'll just uh, pull it back out and make it permanent. If not, we'll keep experimenting with it until we get it right. And of course, while I was doing this work, <laughs> this tight and nice close-up work, like uh, putting the pickups into the uh, blend pot and grounding those separately. Uh, I didn't have the camera on. <laughs> of course, the only problem is, even if I had the camera on, I don't think I'd have shown it because I had to have a face right up there, right next to it like that to see these little tiny things. And that's another point I want to bring up about all this stuff. They've gotten so thin and so cheap about their wiring that it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. I mean. <laughs> There's barely enough wire here at these gauges to make a connection. It's so thin, it's so flimsy. If my iron is on too high, it will actually melt the wiring. It's like, damn. Well, yes, it's too hot. Obviously, the wiring is too hot, but shit. If you see how thin these little wires are, it's just silly ridiculous. Like, I can't believe it. Oh, frustrating guys. They come out with some thicker wires like, uh, you know, decent gauge. It's a lot easier to work on these things as well, so they last a lot longer too. And what's really confusing is on this diagram, there's no place for this ground wire coming off all these, these pots, all three of them. Four of them actually, in a blend pot. Uh, it's a bare wire, it's connected to everything else as a uh, contact ground wire and there's no end to it. Like, where's it supposed to end, guys? I don't see that in the diagram. I don't see that anywhere online. It's like, what the hell? You ground these pots, that's a good, but where does it go from there? Holy cow, I just don't get it. All right, so those are all connected where they belong. Everything else is pretty much done. I've got uh, a green wire coming off the uh, main controls that's the only wire left bare and not attached 
I gotta verify where that goes, as well as what to do with this freestanding ground wire that you've got out here hanging in space. I just don't get it. I have no idea. But I think I know where that green wire goes. It goes to the other side of that uh, jack, if that makes any sense. And right now, I've got a different wire going to that jack off this large blend pot here. And it would seem to make more sense that that ground wire would come off the uh, controller rather than this pot to do its job. I don't get it. That is just plain confusing. Now I've got uh, three ground wires so far already hooked together. <laughs> and this green is supposed to be either hot or not. Let's see, according to all this, that's a passive, this is active obviously. Yellow back and forth to one another. That's not the way this is wired, so that's not the diagram. And this shows this wire coming off this volume pot, which makes sense, to the uh, jack. But I still don't see what the hell is to do with that green wire that's left there in space. It shows on this diagram 5.4, which is what this thing is, a 5.4 harness. Along with this little uh, controller flipper here. Hmm. Son of a gun. Confusing, confusing, confusing. I'm not sure what to do with that green wire. That's the only one left. You always plug it in and turn it on and see what happens. <laughs> of course, it is grounded to the, to the uh, right here with this little jewel here, this, these three wires, that's grounded. But what about this ground here to the pots? The tiles all in. This green wire is supposed to go to the uh, jack. What about the other diagram shows the other green wire coming off a different... Uh, stack pot you know what's to do with it shoot confusing well, one, one thing's for sure is that it does show these uh items uh grounded properly the neck pickup and the bridge pickup are grounded to the uh pot they're extra parts and it shows that it's ground the poor they're grounded at so, ah, oh boy. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Hang in there, guys. This is more confusing. I hope you can see some of this. No, of course you can't. Same as the guitar, you're winding it under the top loop to keep it in there. And the whole thing tightens upwards. Alright, there's good two wraps. Okay, so let's got that one done. Oh boy, and fret buzz galore again. So now we go to the 60. Same routine. Same everything. Let's whip those things out of there. That got that one. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go the same length on this one. Maybe you can see it better now. Okay, so I'm going to do the same length on this one. Do the other one. All right. Okay.
And of course, this one is not staying in the saddle either. I'll have to go back down there and put it in once I get a couple of loops on this. Let me do this. All right, now it's just tight. All right, got it. Oh boy, what fun this is. <laughs> All right, last one of the 40. Okay. It's a little pop with those things out of that uh, loop. All right, let's straighten this out and go up to the next one to get the right length cut. Oh, okay. And of course, the uh, thinner the gauge, less length you need on them to wrap them around, but here we go. So I can't keep this one in the saddle this time, but keep some pressure on it. I do have a uh, winder that can do bases, but it's just not charged up. And it sure would help a lot right now because this thing's taking forever. <laughs> Wind up. Oh, we'll get there. Out there, a couple loops around, and we've got it. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I've got to come back down the other end and adjust those saddles. So hang in there. Okay, guys, I got roughly tuned in right now. And uh, all I have to do is give it some time to stretch and do its thing and come back to it. So hang in there, guys. Okay, guys. <clears throat> okay, guys. So what I'm doing right now, I'm measuring the uh, relief on this neck because I'm not really happy with this at all with the prep buzz on this. So I'm going to go to the uh, 17th uh, fret backwards and see. Uh -uh. Wow, I can't get 1,200. Uh-uh, that's just not enough relief on this guitar. Dang it. Okay, well, I have to put more relief on it, uh, just this uh, truss rod some more. And get back to you. I want to get uh, point oh one two on this guitar. 1,200s on it, uh, as far as relief's concerned. I got nothing. I got uh, shit less than a half that, so hang in there. So guys, what I want to do is loosen up these strings so I can adjust this readily. I put a full turn on that neck, that truss rod. I, I only have 1200s on this neck, it's like unbelievably straight. And with this radius, you expect to get 1200s, all right. All right, there's a full turn there on this Ibanez. Come on out there, damn it. That should do it. All right, full turn, full turn, full turn. Should do the trick, and we'll tune it back up again, and uh, see what we get with the relief. 
Okay, we got tuned back up again. Let's uh, check that relief now and see if that helped any. I don't think it did a lot to it. But uh, let's just put this capo back on here. This gauge out here to it. Oh, please, baby, help me out here. Aha, yes. I got 12. Okay. <laughs> Finally. I've got a relief of uh, 1200s or yeah, 1200s anyway. So, that is finally taken care of. So I got the right relief on the neck. And uh, we'll set up the action here just a little bit and get that set up. So hang in there, guys. Hi, guys. Okay, we got uh, the little, two little basses ready to play. Now, didn't I tell you this is the cutest little bass player you've ever seen? She is just tiny cute. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi guys, I am Sherilyn and I am a novice bass player. I've been uh, playing, noodling around for about eight years. I take lessons uh, every week from an excellent teacher. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am a teacher in one of the local school districts here. And uh, I, my favorite type of music is gospel, R&B. I really love it all, but I'm particularly uh, like funk, R&B trying to learn how to stay in the pocket as much as I can. Uh, like I say, I'm a novice, so I'm taking lessons and trying to learn how to, yeah. Uh, yeah. all about my scales, my molds, and all of that kind of stuff. Good, you wanna give your teacher a plug so that people can hire him or contact him? Oh yeah, his name is uh, Charles McCampbell. The, the uh, name of the uh, studio is called Music Lover Studio. And uh, where they I, look, where they look, he's in Duncanville. And okay. as he stated, I have my two bases. This is one of them that I had some uh, upgrades and repairs done on. Not really repairs, but upgrades from the uh, stock Bartolini's to some hopefully some more funkier Bartolini's. Cool. Well, let's hear you play your okay. Bass. Sure, I'll give you a little sample of something that I can do. Cool, uh, cool. Guys, didn't I tell you she's the cutest little thing? <laughs> now she's a grown woman, so I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't be flirting with her because my wife's coming back soon. But she is just so cute, you want to pick her up and just paint her. <laughs> Playing that big old bass. That bass is big as she is. Okay, we're going to cut away for a minute, guys. Get our bass over here. So hang in there. 